Rainbows, and welcome to season two, episode 50 of The Royal Family. I am so excited for this episode. There's gonna be so much that we're doing, and it's going to be Han and Araminta's royal wedding, which, oh my god, I'm so excited for. There's a few things I wanna say to you guys first. Number one, after this episode, I am gonna be taking a little break, just like two weeks probably. I just need some time to catch up on things, like things in life, like do my taxes, like adult things. And I figured after episode 50 was probably a good time to do that. So yeah, just so you guys are aware. And then after Han and Araminta's wedding, we are going to be going to see Makai because he's going to be going on a date. And then we're also going to see the royal family of Salvadorada. And then I'm just gonna explain things first. So this is Han and Araminta's wedding venue. I'm going to post this on the gallery. Again, as you guys know, if you've seen my videos, most of them, I don't build. So this is just a renovated lot. This is originally by Kate Emerald, I believe. I'm gonna put my version on the gallery and then I'll give credit to her version as well if you wanted to download her original version because I did make a lot of changes to this. So the guests are currently arriving to the wedding. So as you can see, they're kind of gathered there. They should be coming in soon though. As they're trickling in, I'm just going to explain some things because we have a lot to talk about from the last episode. So it has been a month since the last episode or like in, in sim time, not in real time. But we're saying it's been a month since the last episode. I know and I understand that some people were a little bit upset that we moved on so quickly after Philip's death in the last episode. I've never had a death happen towards the beginning of a video before and I thought the best thing to do was to move on and talk about it in this video instead of cutting the video off at just like 10 minutes. However, I did some posts on Instagram of how the Oasis Springs royal family is going through things and how they're handling Philip's death. There are actually different parts, so I'm gonna link all of those in the description below so you can check those out. I actually highly recommend reading them. I'll describe them in just a second, but probably want to read them as well. But as you did see in the beginning of this video, Kimmy and Makana are back together and that took place like right after Philip's death. And we skip a month later to Han and Araminta's wedding. So Makana did realize that even though he just wanted to figure some things out on his own, he wants to spend the rest of his life with Kimberly and he has to learn to confide in her and that he's not bringing her down because he can't do that every time he's going through something if there were to get married in the future. And like if he needs space, Kimmy will definitely understand that, but like he can't say that he wants to go on a break when they're married in the future. And he obviously realizes that Kimmy needs him right now too. And she told him that he loves him. They've never said I love you to each other before. So that was the first time. So yeah, so they're back together. And then Gabriel, he's dealing with some stuff too. So he got burned, obviously. You guys saw that it caught on fire in the last episode. So he has some burns that are probably going to leave some permanent scars, both on his face and on his body. And then Aisha is dealing with things in her own way. She was getting a little bit frustrated with herself because she couldn't cry, even though she was in a lot of pain, obviously, from her father's death. But that does happen to people. So Aisha just had to realize that, but she's actually kind of been more of the strong one in the family right now. She's been there for her mom. She's been there to comfort her. And Naya is obviously in a lot of pain. Philip was the love of her life. But yeah, so Naya is just like so grateful for Gabriel, even though everything happened with Philip, but without Gabriel, the whole family would not have gotten out. So she's 100% supportive of Gabriel and Arya. He's known as this national hero now. However, Gabriel has also been going through some stuff. Like he's been feeling really guilty about what happened, even though Arya has been assuring him that there was nothing he could do for her father and that he saved the rest of her family, but Gabriel's still feeling really guilty. He's been having nightmares about it, kind of just like flashbacks too. So he ended up going to the doctor for it. He was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. So he's going through recovery for that, but Arya has been there for him. The rest of Arya's family and Gabriel's family have all been there for him too. And then yeah, so since this has been a month since the last episode, Naya's back up on her feet now. She has moments where she breaks down, especially if she sees something that reminds her of Philip, but she really wanted to go to Han and Araminta's wedding. Like she's been a really good mentor for Araminta because they both became monarchs at a young age when they were teenagers. So she wanted to come to their wedding. So this is the first time the Oasis Springs family has really been at a social event in a month since Philip's death. So we're going to get to see them. I also want to apologize to Naya, who is the creator of Philip and who obviously Queen Naya is named after. She was one of my very first subscribers, probably like what, like subscriber number 33, something like that. So I'm so sorry about Philip. I also had people saying that I killed Philip. I did not do it on purpose. It was more like if someone died, we would let it happen. Yeah, Philip was one of my favorites. I'm so upset about his death. He reminded me of Paul Walker, which is my favorite actor. I bawled my eyes out when Paul Walker died. And I also bawled my eyes out when Philip died. So he's going to stay alive in our memory. So yeah, 
yeah, okay, so that that's a little bit of backstory on the Oasis Springs family. Again, go check out those Instagram posts. It'll give you more insight on things. But we do have most of our guests here now. They're kind of all crowding in the front here. Oh my gosh, this is Han's nephew, Ty's son. He's so cute, but I don't know what he's wearing. I want to change him. And okay, so this is Gabriel. So I'm going to show you guys his burns if you didn't see it. So obviously you can't see his burns on his hands and, and all that stuff because he's wearing long sleeves, but these are the burns on his face right now. I just thought it made it a lot more realistic to do that. But we're going to start the ceremony soon, the wedding ceremony. So before this, they had their tea ceremony, which is a very important tradition. So typically for the tea ceremony, it's just the bride and groom and their parents and grandparents and sometimes other relatives who they serve the tea to. But Han and Araminta, they don't, their grandparents aren't alive and they don't have any other relatives. So they don't have like aunts or uncles or anything like that. So besides their parents, it was also Kyo and Tai that were there. I had them serving tea to them as well because it's like their elders. Takashi was there too, but it doesn't really count as one of the elders, so they didn't like do the whole serving tea to them too. Basically, they serve the tea and they bow to them. It's like a sign of respect. And then their relatives, they give them red envelopes of money and gold jewelry, and they'll give them advice and words of wisdom. Someone on the stream said this, and I completely agree that Akio might have like kind of awkwardly shifted and just kind of patted Han on the shoulder and said, mom would have been proud of you. Like very awkwardly, didn't really know what to say, but he wanted to say something nice. So that was their tea ceremony ceremony that was earlier this morning and then you guys got to see their little moment before the actual wedding ceremony when Araminta was getting ready. Also the line from Han saying like you look beautiful and she's like you can't even see me and he was like I don't have to see you I just know. That was from Rosie on our stream so I just wanted to give credit to her because she said it in the stream and I was like can I use that? That's so cute. So nowadays for Chinese weddings the bride just wears a white wedding dress like a western white wedding dress and it is actually a tradition for them to have like three or four or outfit changes, one for the tea ceremony, one for the wedding, one for the reception, and then sometimes one to say goodbye to the guests too. So Araminta actually has three. I decided to go with a more traditional red dress for her wedding ceremony because I thought it would be different than what you guys usually see. However, she does have a white wedding dress for her reception and it's gorgeous. She looks like a goddess. I'm so excited for you guys to see. I'm going to be doing like a photo reel at the end of this video of their wedding pictures and I'm so, oh my God, you guys are gorgeous. I'm so excited for you guys to see that. All right, so we have all of our guests here. We are going to start the wedding ceremony. So this is our ceremony area. We're gonna have all the guests go here. Okay, so the guests, okay, good. Everyone's starting to come in. So it's supposed to be spring, pretend it's spring. Because when I change it to the actual springtime, all the cherry blossoms and all this stuff, like it all goes bare, like it's winter or something. So to make it pretty still, I had to change it to summer, but it's spring, just pretend. I also actually, this lot's also in Windenburg, but pretend we're in Glimmerbrook because Glimmerbrook doesn't have a 64 by 64 lot. So, okay, yeah, we're gonna start the ceremony now. All right. So I'm doing this kind of similar to how I did Amira's wedding. Their wedding is so gorgeous. I love all the cherry blossom trees. People on the stream saw me decorate this and they were so patient with me because it took forever and I kept changing my mind about things too. But look how pretty it all is. Han is so cute. He's literally crying. He's so in love with her and he's seeing her for the first time and how beautiful she looks. I also have a tux for him to wear at the reception too. So he's just wearing a traditional outfit for now and then he's gonna change into a tux and Aramint is gonna change into her white wedding gown. And they're also probably not gonna try for a baby till the next episode because I want them to kind of enjoy married life. They're gonna go on their honeymoon in Sulani after the wedding, but she looks so beautiful. I'm literally so happy for them. They deserve the world. They love each other so much. Like, honestly, like just so much. I love them so much. It's actually also a tradition in some Asian cultures for the groom just to walk the bride down the aisle. Like he doesn't even wait at the altar for her. But because of what I have animation wise, I'm just having her walk down the aisle herself. So she wouldn't even have, like it's not even a tradition for her to have a parent walk her down the aisle. But yeah, look how pretty it all is. I love them so much. I love, oh God, I love them so much. Okay, so that's the ceremony. They're so beautiful. Everyone's congratulating them. You guys can see here, this is kind of what we had going on. Oh, people are taking pictures of Sadira. That's fine. But okay, so this is our reception area. All right, so we need the guests to go to the reception. I need to have Han and Aramin to change too, but let's serve some food first so people actually come here. All right, so people are gathering in here for the reception. And here is Araminta in her wedding dress. Look at how beautiful she is, you guys. I mean, technically it's not her actual ceremony dress. It's like just for the reception, but oh my God. Gosh. Look at how pretty she is. 
this, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> and also on the streams, we were trying to find a hair that was perfect for her. And this wasn't actually one of the ones that I had picked on the stream. We were kept picking an updo and I found this one later. And I'm so glad I did because she looks like a goddess. Even Juliet is like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. And then so Arya is here. So I have, I mean, because typically people only wear all black like for a funeral, even if they're in mourning. But I do have a kids voice of spring, so they're not wearing black anymore. However, I do still have Nea wearing black. I might have her in black for a while. Not as long as Amira. I don't want to do that again. I don't think every character would do that, but I just think that Nea is going to probably be wearing dark colors for a while. But, oh God, guys, look at this. I love this. I love that everybody's, well, not everybody, but people are sitting and eating and it's cool. And I just love the whole banquet style thing, the gold and the red. So I do have Corn Boy and Farm Boy here. Ellis is feeling a little bit tense. I think that is probably just because of the royal events. Like he's trying really hard to get used to them. He's trying to adjust to the royal life. And Cornelius keeps trying to make sure he's okay and like always making sure he's trying to have a good time. Like I feel like Cornelius is very self-conscious about that. Like anytime he sees Ellis somewhat tense, he's like, like, are you okay? Like, is there anything I can do? I feel like Ellis is just like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I just like maybe to step out for a second or something like that. I feel like Ellis is trying really hard though. He wants to get used to this life. He does, especially if him and Cornelius are going to be together and Cornelius is going to be king. Like that's something that Ellis has to get used to. So he's trying, but Corinne is sitting down too and checking up on them, maybe and making sure that they're okay. That's so sweet of her. But yeah, I think Ellis will be okay. He's just a little bit tense right now. He's got, he's got to get used to things. They'll be okay though. They're really cute. They go horseback riding together. They're more public about their relationship now. Cornelius has been getting closer to his sisters, especially Genevieve. He's just happier in general now, which is great. Ellis has been coming over for like family game nights sometimes too. And then we have Ariana and Sir Thomas Stratton here. So this is the first time we're seeing Thomas and Ariana at a party where he's not really working. So Ariana has now officially turned 18 again in my game. I think of 21 as a young adult. So she's not turning into a young adult technically. She's still in the teenager life phase. But for story purposes, she has turned 18. So they can be more public about their relationship now. They can like go on dates by themselves. Her parents really like Thomas. They just wanted to be wary about their relationship before they turned 18 or before she turned 18. But yeah, now she has. So they can be more together now. And they're really cute. I'm excited for them. I love them. They're adorable. They seem to like each other a lot. Ariana also looks so mature. Like she looks like a young adult already, especially with her short hair. And this is kind of the first social event we've seen them both together at, I think. Like when Thomas isn't working, so they can actually talk to each other. He can talk to her without fear of getting in trouble because he's supposed to be working. But yeah, they're super cute. I love them a lot. Okay, you guys, I have Han and Araminta dancing their first dance as a married couple. And oh my God, can we just talk about how freaking cute this is? Look, okay, first of all, look how much Han is blushing. My goodness gracious, his fa this is probably the brightest I think I've seen his face. It's so pink. It is so pink. And Araminta is like resting her head on his shoulder. And, like she loves him so much. They love each other so much. They're so cute. They're just, they're so in love. They're so in love. They're the only ones dancing. Akio's just standing here staring at them. But it look, like he's happy. Oh, he's blushing too. But he's happy for them. So that's okay. Him and Han are getting along a little bit better now. Akio doesn't really know how to interact with him all the time, but he tries. So that's the good thing is that he's trying. And then we also have Kimmy and Makana here. Of course, they're back together. They're super cute. Makana has been feeling a lot better now. His energy has gone up so much and he's just feeling like more motivated and happier in general. So he is doing really, really well. I'm so happy for them. They're so cute. I'm happy they're back together. And I feel like now they're closer than ever too. And then of course, everyone else is doing well. All the other couples, Manuel and Juliet are doing great. Juliet has been there for him while he's been mourning his father's death. Actually, his best friend Takashi too, which is Araminta's brother. He's also been helping him through things a lot, especially because Takashi lost his father too, even though they were not as close. Takashi and his father. He like understands it at least. So he's been there for his friend. He's been a really good friend. And here's Zamora. We're gonna go see her and King Cayman later in this episode. But yeah, we should actually move on. We got a lot to do in this episode. And they are just, they're so cute. They're so cute. They're so in love. They're gonna be going on their honeymoon after this. I cannot get over her dress. Again, I have plenty of wedding pictures at the end of this video. Oh, you know what? No, they need to cut the cake. Let's have them cut the cake. Oh, everyone's celebrating. Everyone's celebrating the married couple. 
she's bringing the cake over to him. There's, oh, she's feeding him the cake. Oh, they're feeding each other. Oh my God, they're so cute. I love them. I love them. I love them. <laughs> but yeah, okay, let's go ahead and move on. Okay, so we are now in Sulani because Makai has asked out Jessica's art teacher, Lily, on a date. So this is his first date since the whole thing happened with Amira. Since him, he, he used to have a girlfriend named Kayla. So they broke up. So yeah, but since the whole thing happened with Amira. So you guys saw that he met Lily in the last episode and Jessica was like pushing him to ask her out. And this is the first girl that he's actually like, yeah, I wouldn't mind asking her out. So he did. He took her to this restaurant. So it's a little bit of a casual date. It's like a lunch. He's grabbing a table for them right now. I feel like before this too, Jessica like tried to prepare him for his date and was like, make sure to be charming. And Makai was like, okay, I'll make sure my charm level is like at 200%. And I kind of imagine that Jessica was like spraying him with cologne, like a lot of it. And he's like, that's enough. But yeah, I imagine Jessica like chasing him around the house, trying to spray cologne on him. And she's like, no, you need to smell good for your date. So they just ordered food and they're they're both feeling, oh, she's feeling flirty. He's feeling confident. <gasps> Ooh, eh, oh, a hot lunch date. That's what he has. Okay, it's a hot lunch date, guys. That's fine. All right, let's do, let's flirt. But yeah, she's feeling flirty. She's feeling so flirty. I mean, like, how can you not feel flirty around Makai though? He is so cute. Oh, guys, Makai's feeling very flirty now. <gasps> Makai's feeling very flirty now. Oh my God, their relationship is so high. They get along so well. That's amazing. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Okay, let's go, uh, let's do more romance. They could have their first kiss. Is that too soon? I don't know. They're getting along really well though. I feel like Jessica has told Lily that Makai is a mermaid. I feel like she goes around telling a lot of women that. Like, do you like mermaids? Do you like attractive men? Well, my dad's an attractive merman. And I feel like Lily's asking him about that. Like, so you're a mermaid. I think it's a known thing around here that Sulani royal family is. So she knows that he's part of the Sulani royal family. He's the queen's cousin. He's probably asking her like if she's from Sulani or like if she moved here. And so Lily's just telling him that she'd moved here. She's actually from Willow Creek, but she moved to Sulani and she became an art teacher and like painting and teaching kids. That's her passion. She loves to do that. She loves Jessica. Jessica is like one of her favorite students. So yeah, I mean, guys, they're so cute. They're both feeling very flirty. They're romantic and friendly, friendly relationship. They're romantic and friendship. It's so high. I kind of think they're gonna have their first kiss. I wouldn't, I don't know. It seems a little bit fast, but like their romantic relationship has gone up so much. So I think I'm gonna have them have their first kiss. Just things seem to be going so well. It's a suggestive conversation. They're both feeling extremely flirty. How romantic is this too? Like on the beach like this? Oh my gosh. Oh, they're so cute, you guys. Okay. Oh my God. All right. Well, we're gonna leave them to their date then. It's a steamy exchange. I'm sure they're going on like a few more dates. If things go well, they might make it official. So maybe by the next episode, we'll see if they've been dating for a while and if they're in a relationship. I'm sure Jessica is like all for this too. She's been pushing this so much for Makai to get in a relationship. So yeah, okay. So, oh, oh, they, oh, they just kissed again. That's adorable. Oh my gosh. All right, yeah, we're gonna leave them here. I'm gonna end this date. It was a great date, a legendary date. Lily and him seem to get along really well. Lily's not from Sulani, but she's just telling him how much she loves it. Like she loves Sulani. I feel like it's probably somewhere that she's always wanted to move to. And when she got the chance, she finally did. So it's just nice having someone who loves Sulani as much as Makai does. But yeah, okay, we're gonna leave them here. Next, we're gonna go to Selvadorada. Okay, so we're now at the palace of Selvadorada. We're here because we have King Cayman, Azara, Zamora, and Nephthys here. So, oh God, they're already arguing. Okay, but Cayman and Zamora, because of what happened with Naya and Philip and Charlotte and Harmony, I think that maybe people have found out about Naya's father and Harmony, Charlotte's mother, and about the affair and just like why Charlotte felt the need to set the castle on fire, like all that stuff. I just feel like this, all these rumors have gotten out. Now Cayman and Zamora have known about it. And I feel like it's really made Zamora start thinking about everything because she doesn't want that to happen with Nephthys. She doesn't want that to happen to Azara. So Zamora and Cayman talked about it and they agreed to have Nephthys move in with them. They're going to tell Azara that they're going to keep sending her money. They've agreed to let her keep her title of lady, but that's it. They promised Azara that they're going to raise Nephthys and they're going to pay her a lot of money to make sure that she doesn't interfere. And they're also going to make Azara sign something that says she's not allowed to interfere again with Nephthys life or there's going to be consequences if she does, if she tries to get involved. I'm sure that Azara probably wants more than what they're offering, but I feel 
Sometimes Amora is also pretty intimidating to Azara. I think Azara is realizing that this is all she's gonna get. So Nephthys or Sissy for short, we're gonna call her Sissy. She's gonna live with them. I think that Zamora and Kaman have already told Adric and Elon, their sons, about the whole thing and their father's affair. And I'm sure that the boys were really mad at their father at first, but I think Zamora talked to them and she was very adamant and she said that she's come to be able to forgive their father and that their father made a mistake and that it's not gonna happen again. And she doesn't want them to hate their father for this either. I'm sure it came in and apologized to his sons a lot too. But yeah, they had to tell them because they're about to take in their half sister, Sissy. You guys are also gonna have to tell me what you think. Do you think that they should tell Sissy that Zamora is their mother? Or do you think that they should be honest and tell her that it's Zara and that their mother just couldn't take care of her or something like that? Let me know. But yeah, I mean, Zara looks pretty uh, angry, but I think she's just gotta go. We're gonna tell her to go away. This is what it's come down to. She, oh wow, okay, she just disappeared in thin air. But yeah, so Sissy's living here now. Look at her, she's super sassy, she's adorable. But Sissy is going to live here now and they're taking her in and raising her. The decision has come to this because of what happened with Naya and the Oasis Springs royal family. It just made Zamora think about it a lot and that's what she wanted to do. I feel like her and Cayman are probably gonna have to go to like couples therapy or something just to mend their relationship. But she does wanna work on their relationship. They both wanna work on it. So yeah, and then Elon. Um, so I'm actually, I don't know if we're gonna be able to bring her here. You guys already saw them at the wedding. But Elon and Natalia, well, okay, so Natalia has told her mom. She stood up to her mom because she likes Elon so much and she wanted to keep seeing him and she didn't wanna keep hiding it and like sneaking around her mother. So she stood up to her mom, told her that she's seeing Elon, whether she likes it or not. This is like her finally standing up to her after all these years because her mom pushes her to do so much stuff. I feel like her mom was just in so much shock and she was just like, what? First of all, Elon's a prince anyway, so it doesn't matter. Second of all, no, it just doesn't matter. Like he makes her happy. They've been spending a lot of time together too. I feel like her mom just like was so in shock that her daughter was standing up to her. She just didn't really say anything. I'm sure that she's kind of mad at her daughter for doing this, but I don't think Natalia cares. She's telling her mother that she can't control her anymore. So Natalia and Elon are gonna keep seeing each other now. And Adric, I'm sure he'll find someone soon. It's got a specific type and I'm sure we'll meet them soon. So yeah. Okay, so we're now at the Windenburg Palace. We are here because this is the last thing we're doing in this video, but Amira now has a new royal advisor. So this is Nia. She's worked at the Royal Windenburg staff already. Like she's been here for years. And then before that, she worked on the staff for the royal family of Sulani. And she actually had to move here because she got a divorce. And then recently, so she has worked at the palace for a while. So technically Amira has known her for a while, but recently her son has had to move in with her. So, oh God. Okay, so this is her son, Caspian. He's so angry, my God. He's a little bit of an angsty boy. Um, yeah, this is Caspian. He goes by Ian for short. I'm going to have Alice May go talk to him. Let's have her do a friendly introduction. Oh my God, her and her and Kaleo are talking though. But yeah, I think that Amira asked Alice May probably to go talk to him, to talk to Caspian, because she's like, hey, look, like our new royal advisor, Nia, her son is here. She had to bring him for our meeting. She's like, sweetie, can you please go talk to him and entertain him while we have our meeting and while we talk? So, oh, Alice May's in range to earn the good manners trait, cool. Okay, so she's just introduced herself to Ian, but oh God, maybe she should try to calm him down. Like maybe. He He's being super angry and she's like trying to calm him down a little bit. Alice May already had her, all of her friends over. Oh my God, wait, hold on. Oh no, I think she's about to get down, but Jessica and Frederick were just up here alone. That is so cute. <laughs> they were just hanging out by themselves up there on the monkey bars. That, why is it so adorable? I love that. But yeah, maybe Amira was like, can you invite Caspian to hang out with you and your friends? And Alice May was like, okay. So she's talking to him. He's still feeling very angry though. She asked him if he wanted to hang out with everyone, but he's being super angsty. Oh, Alice May's getting frustrated. I I feel like she's like, I'm just trying to be nice. Like Alice May just wanted to know if he wanted to come hang out with them. And he's like being so angry. Alice May's really outgoing. She's probably first Solomon was like, hi, I'm Alice May. And he was just like, um, okay. I mean, I'm sure he knows exactly who she is. She's the princess. She's the heir. She's going to be the queen of Winnenberg one day. I'm sure he knows exactly who she is. I like how Jessica and Frederick are just doing their own thing. Oh no. Now Kaleo, now he's arguing with Caspian. He's probably, he's probably sticking up for Alice May. He was like, you don't have to yell at her. Like, what's your problem? Oh God, oh God, this kid is so angsty. Okay, Kaleo. I think Alice May can handle herself though. She's probably like, hold on Kaleo, I got this. I'm gonna have her apologize to him and just say like, look, I'm sorry. You're welcome to come play with us if you want to. Oh no, Kaleo's still arguing with him. I feel like Alice May is just like, Kaleo, stop, I got this. <laughs> She's pretty bossy. Okay, Alice May is just trying to apologize to him. Kaleo, 
Okay, all right. Okay, they're just arguing here. I feel like Alice May is trying so hard. Like, I feel like kids are rarely mean to Alice May. She's kind of got such like a confident presence that like she doesn't get bullied or anything like that because she has so much confidence with herself and she's so outgoing. So she's not used to kids being mean to her. So she doesn't know what to do. Just, yeah, not being mean to her, but I guess just being rude. And she was like, hey, do you want to like come play with us? And he's just like, I'm okay. And she's like, wait, why? Like, why don't you want to come play with us? Like, she just doesn't get it. All right, I seriously though, I keep trying to get Alice May to apologize, but Kaleo and Caspi and just keep arguing with each other. Okay. Cleo's trying so hard to stick up for Alice May, but Alice May's like, I don't need you to stick up for me. <laughs> she just wants to apologize to the kid. Kaleo, let her talk. Let her talk. All right. Well, I guess we'll leave them at that. But Caspian and his family are made by, her name is Anya, but her gallery ID is Nastia1116. So N-A-S-T-I-A-1116. So I'll put that information in the description below as well. So yeah, I'm okay. They finally stopped arguing. Alice May just wants to try to apologize apologize to this kid and just have the invitation open if he wants to come hang out. Oh my god, and then Jabari and Cedric are just, oh, they're so cute. Jabari, oh, Jabari's still dressed up from the wedding. So in the next episode, I'm doing a bit of a time skip. Therefore, Cedric will be aging up into a child. We're probably gonna do a joint birthday party with Cedric and then also Frederick and William. They're gonna be aging up into teenagers in the next episode. Oh, oh, her and Nani, they're just playing around. Oh, I think Caspian just laughed. He was like, I'm out of here. Oh my god. But yeah, Frederick and William. These two, they're gonna be aging up into a teenager in the next episode, and then Cedric's gonna be aging up into a child. I kind of like don't want him to grow up. I think he's the cutest tot. Look at him. Look at the bouncing. Look at the. Oh my god, he's just bobbing. The little toddler bob. Oh my god, he's so cute. I think he's the cutest toddler so far. This is the first toddler where I'm like, I don't want him to grow up. I don't want him to. He's too cute. I don't want to age him up, but we have to. Oh my god, look at him, you guys. He's so cute. Yeah, we're okay. We're gonna age him up in the next episode. Okay, we're gonna do one more thing before we go. We're gonna put Han and Araminta in their honeymoon house, so let's go do that. Okay, so the last thing I just want to do in this video is just show you guys where Han and Araminta are going to be on their honeymoons. So I just moved them in this house in Sulani, but technically, I mean, cause you can't have a rental lot here. So I just moved them in, but yeah, it's a cute little place. I'll be posting pictures on my Instagram. My Instagram is in the description below, but just pictures of them on their honeymoon. I don't think we're going to have them try for a baby till the next episode, which technically be like years later, but I mean, it's not just for story's sake. That's what we're saying. I mean, they're still both pretty young. So I don't think they wanted to have kids yet. I also think I want them to have kids when like the rest of their generation starts having kids too because otherwise their kids are just gonna be like they're not gonna be anywhere close to the age of the other kids and I kind of like it when they're all around the same age so I think I'm gonna wait a little bit longer for them. Ooh, actually would we have them try for a baby in the next episode then? Okay, I might have to wait until the other couples get married and are about to start having kids too. So let's wait a little bit longer. But yeah, they're really cute. They're going to enjoy their honeymoon. I'm so happy for them and that they got married, you guys. They're gonna technically get to be here for a couple weeks. But yeah, I'm gonna be posting so many wedding pictures and so many honeymoon pictures of them. And then once they have a baby or once they get pregnant, I'll be posting those pictures too. I love that. Oh God. Oh my God, they're kissing. Oh, they're so cute. They're so cute. Okay, so yeah. We'll let them enjoy their honeymoon and we're going to end this video here. So let me know what you thought of this episode and if you had a lot of fun. I know we did a lot in this video. Let me know what you think of Han and Araminta's wedding if you loved it as much as I did. Remember at the end of this video, I'm gonna be showing some pictures from their wedding as well. Let me know what you think of Makai's date with Lily. Let me know what you think of Cayman and Zamora's decision to take in Nephthys. Let me know what you think of Natalia standing up to her mother. Let me know what you think of our new characters, Caspian and his mother Nia. I'll keep you guys updated on when the next episode will be posted, but again, I am going to take a little bit of a break. Just follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and those handles are in the description below to keep updated. If you enjoyed this, hit that like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!